the windup and the pitch. He swings a line shot, base hit, right field. The Tigers win it. Here comes K line to score, and it's all over. Don Wirt singles. The Tigers mob down. K line has scored. The fans are steaming on the field, and the Tigers have won their first minute since 1945. Let's listen to the bedlam here at Tiger Stadium. <laughs> What a climax to a wonderful year, the year of the Tiger, 1968. This tennis, what a great gift to Detroit, with love from the Tigers. Go get him, Tiger. Wow. We're all behind our baseball team. Let's go get him, Tiger. Series bound and picking up steam. Let's go get them, Tiger. There'll be joy in Tiger Town. We'll sing you songs when the Bengals bring the pennant home where it belongs. We're all behind our baseball team. Let's go get them. Detroit Tigers. Go get them, Tiger. before, troubled Detroit has had too many other problems to be caught up in the 14 fight for the pennant. The Red Sox won in 1967 on the last day of the season, but a new Tiger spirit was forged in the heat of that campaign. They lost the pennant and won a future. One man who saw that future was Bill Freehand. Here's what he said at Lakeland during spring training of 1968. Bill, can the Tigers do it this year? Well, Ernie, I'll tell you what, I'm convinced that we can do it. Uh, we've got some real good talent. I think we gained something last year by virtue of the fact that we had a lot of young guys who went through an experience we'd never been through before. And I'll tell you what, if we can keep our guys free from injuries, we're going to win in 68. The year of the Tiger began unhappily. Before 41,429 fans at Tiger Stadium, Earl Wilson hit a home run but lost to the Red Sox. But ah, that next day, that was the tip-off of a whole season of wonderful next day. In the ninth inning, up came Gates Brown with a pinch hit home run to give rookie John Warden a 4-3 to three relief victory. Ray Gates had a special magic with the public. Uh, what do you think it was? Well, I think that he uh, transpired to them a quiet-spoken fellow, a humble-looking guy, but a powerful-looking fellow at the plate who produced. He represented the underdog. In the games that followed, there were two more Tiger victories for relief pitchers, one by Darrell Patterson, the other by Fred Lasher. And the Tigers kept on winning. Nine straight games they won, more than any other Tiger team had put together since 1949. They won a few the easy way, but only a few. They beat the White Sox in the 10th inning on Bill Freehand's single. They came from behind of the ninth on Jim Price's pinch single to tie the Indians, and won it in the 10th on Willie Horton's home run. They took three more victories at Chicago. First, sinking the White Sox with three runs in the 10th inning, then sweeping a doubleheader on April 21st. It was a date to remember. The second of those doubleheader victories was Denny McLean's first of the season. The year of the Tigers swept on in waves of triumph, in fantastic thrill-packed last-minute victories. Up to the time they clinched the tennis, the Tigers had won 37 games in the seventh inning or beyond, 29 in their last time at bat. Well, Ray, I guess that's just the mark of a champion, isn't it? Certainly is. It's almost like it's a magic formula, something that makes a champion. And when you look back to Boston in 1967, Baltimore in 66, those ball clubs had the same ingredients, the ability to come from behind. Everybody got into the act. Pitchers, hitters, fielders. A catch double by Tom Matchett beat the Orioles on May the 7th. A home run and a magnificent bases-loaded catch by Jim Northam made him the hero of the next Tiger victory. After the game, I talked to Northam. Jimmy made a great catch in Baltimore, a big catch because the bases were loaded, and you hit the ground there and skidded. How do you keep that ball from bouncing out of the glove in a play like that? Well, I hit the ground with my shoulder, and I held the glove up off the ground. You 
Actually, you just dive and catch the ball, and if you get it in your glove, it usually stays in the web, the way the gloves are built now. Did you think you were going to get to that uh, drive off the bat of Robinson? No, when he first hit it, I didn't figure I had a chance to even come close to it, and uh, we just started running over there after it, and all of a sudden I, I dove at the ball, and I was just lucky enough to catch it. And Jenny McLean kept right on winning ball games. Al Kaline drove in six runs as the Tigers walloped the Senators 12 to 1 on May 10th. Another date to remember. But that put the Tigers back into the league lead, and nobody ever caught them. McLean lost his first game of the year when the Orioles broke his five game winning streak on May 15th. But the Tigers then took three out of four from the Senators. Jim Northrup won the first for the ninth inning Grand Slam homer. After the Tigers had lost the second, Gates Brown won the third with an eighth inning pinch single. And history was made as the Tigers won the fourth. One out. Matthews on at first. Three and two the count to K-line, batting in the place of Gates Brown. Tigers out in front, four nothing. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Jones working for Washington on the mound. Stretches. Delivers. There goes the runner. Fly ball to deep left. And that one, you can kiss goodbye. <laughs> K-Line home run with Matthews on base makes it six to nothing with a Tiger. K-Line now has hit 307 home runs in his career and becomes the Tigers' all-time home run hitter, going one ahead of Hank Greenberg. He was tied with Greenberg at 3.06. He now has 307 for his major league career and becomes the Tigers' number one home run hitter. The next day, the Tigers beat the Twins on a 10th inning era. But first, Hernandez about as far right as you'll ever see a shortstop play, even on an overshifted infield, which they're not doing here on Willie. There's a fly ball to right. It's deep, and it is out of here. A home run to tie the ball game. Willie Horton hits one to the opposite field in deep right center, and the game is tied. Bad news on the first trip to the West Coast. Earl Wilson on the shelf three weeks after bruising his heel. Al Kaline out 37 games when his right arm was broken at open by a Lou Kraus pick. A tenth inning loss in the open final punctuated by a free-for-all fight after Jack Aker hit Jim Northup in the head with a pick. But there was good news, too. Denny McLean won his seventh game of the year. And on May 27th, Eddie Matthews hit two home runs for a career total of 512, putting him sixth among all-time home run sluggers of Major League history. Pat Dobson, normally a relief pitcher, went nine innings as he threw a shutout at the Red Sox in his first start. One night when both Bill Freehan and Jim Price were hurt, Wayne Comer, an outfielder, came in to catch and did a good job. And the year the Tiger rolled on with a thrill almost every night. On June 11th, the Tigers beat the Twins for their 13th last inning victory. And on June 12th... Here's McAuliffe now in the crowd yelling, go, go, go. Here's the pitch by Jim Cott. Max Wing has a long fly to right. It may be gone. Going back to Yolanda, and he cannot reach it. It's in for a home run. McCullough puts the Tigers ahead. A home run in the lower deck in right field. The Tigers lead it 2-1. And Denny McLean raced on toward his date with destiny. Swing and a miss on a curve. One ball, two strikes. Clark leaning and waiting. Here it comes. A swing and a miss. The game's over. The Tigers sweep the series as they win the final one here under sunny skies and behind the great pitching of Denny McLean. In the ninth inning, Minnesota. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. The final score, Detroit 3, Minnesota 1. Those late inning victories, one of the most thrilling, came on June the 14th at Chicago. Bob Cooney delivers the wood. The long drive to the left field. Going back is Ward. By the fence. That ball is gone. Home run. Bob Ward reaches the seat in the lower deck of left field. About 20 feet there. As they jump on that first pitch. And that puts the Tigers out in front now. Six to five. Here in the top of the 14th inning. 
Mickey Stanley was as great with his glove as with his bat. Swing, and there's a drive to deep right center. Stanley going after it and dives and makes a great catch. A fabulous catch by Stanley. Aparicio going back to first base. He's doubled off. The play went Stanley to Dick McAuliffe to Bill Freehand on a sensational catch by Mickey Stanley. Mickey, uh, on that great catch in Chicago, how did you get such a good jump on the ball? Well, Ernie, uh, it was a time where I was in a slump uh, with a bat, and when I am in a, a slump with a bat, I'm just a little bit better feeler, and I was on my toes and ready to go, and uh, I, it was just one of the things where I got a real good jump, and I was lucky to catch the ball. I didn't think I was going to catch it. I skinned both elbows and both knees and tore my britches and uh, sweatshirt, and uh, Louis Aparicio was a runner, and uh, we doubled him off at first. He was almost to third base. Mickey, generally, when you have a play like this, uh, do you anticipate and uh, move one way or the other depending on the batter? Well, uh, I do. Uh, this is the day when Joe Sparman was pitching, and uh, I followed the play of the ball, and I think this was a breaking ball inside, and McGraw uh, is more or less a pull hitter, and uh, I think I cheated a half a step uh, uh, by following the pitch. And you know ahead of time what the pitch is going to no, be? No, I don't know uh, what the pitch is going to be, but I follow the flight of the ball, mm -hmm. and uh, I can tell before... The, before the ball reaches the hitter, whether or not it's going to be a breaking ball or a fastball, or whether or not the ball is going to be inside or outside. Manager Mayo Smith later said that, in his personal opinion, that was the outstanding fielding play of the season. Time and again, Tiger Power smothered the opposition. Dick Trzewski beat the Indians with a home run and talked about it after the game. Dick, it's been said that your three-run homer against Cleveland was uh, perhaps one of the turning points of the first half of the Tigers' season. Did it come as a surprise to you? A very definite surprise, uh, in particular uh, uh, because I hit it off Sam McDowell, and, uh, and I, I got a, a real big kick out of it because it came in a spot where it really helped our ball club. Nobody out. Northrop tonight struck out twice and got a grand slammer. That came in the fifth inning. His ninth home out of the year. Fly ball down the line in the right field, and that one is gone! about coming out of slump. He's done it again. Another grand slam home run by Northrop. The Tigers have rallied for three to pull within one run of the Yankees. Yanks five, Detroit four. Now Talbot getting his sign from Fernandez and the right-hander winds and pitches. Swing, there's a long belt in the center field. Robinson going back, way back. He can't get this one. It's passing to the fence. Here comes Stanley. He scores. Rounding third is freehand. He scores. Willie Horton rounding third, and he holds up as the throw comes into Fernandez. It's a long triple for Willie, and the Tigers have the lead. The five favorite Detroit. Kaline returned to action in a new role, playing first base for the first time in his career on July 1st. And he had a big piece of the action as the Tigers won the first game. Two and two to count to Al. Stanley at third base, nobody out. Angels have the infield pulled in. Brunette now pumps, delivers. Fastball, line to left, base hit. Stanley scores from third, and Kaline on with a single. He ripped that one between short and third in the left field. Tigers go out of front, two to one. After the game, I asked Kaline how he liked first base. Uh, I think I'm going to like it quite a bit, Ernie. Uh, it's uh, very interesting over there. I get a chance to talk to all the visiting players, uh, the umpires, and I get a chance to uh, uh, find out what's really happening in the ball game. You know, I played so many years in the outfield, you just wonder what happens when everybody goes to the mound. Now I'm finally learning what they say and, and everything, and I think I'm going to really enjoy it. That set off a four-game sweep over the Angels and a five-game winning streak for the Tigers. The third victory was Jenny McLean's 15th of the season. Achieved with the help of home runs by Willie Horton, Norm Cash, and Dick Krzyzewski. Then came the real wild one on the 4th of July, when the Tigers belted out a 13-10 victory in a slugfest that saw them smash six home runs to tie a major league record. Listen to some of the fireworks. 
including part of the Tigers' nine-run second inning. Swing, there's a long belt to right, a home run by Cash, and it hits the roof of the upper deck. It hits the roof over the third deck, a two-run homer by Cash, and the Tigers have scored eight times in the inning. Go get him, Tiger. There's a long belt to left, and that one's gone. The home run upstairs. Number 20 for Willie Horton. The Tigers now have scored nine times in the second inning. We're all behind our baseball team. Go get him. Detroit Tigers. Go get him. Full count pitch, served up to Jim. Fly ball, hit the deep left field, going back by the fences, right it, it's gone! <laughs> Jim Russell hits home run number 12. He goes from the opposite field, he turns the fence in left center. And he picks up an RBI. That gives him 50 for the season. I'll just say one thing about Jim. He is not choosy where he gets the four baggers. He'll go to right, he'll go to left. Fly ball from long pass. It's deep. That ball may be gone. Kirkpatrick by the fence. It's upstairs. Home run. Go get him. Was one series left before the All-Star Game. The Tigers made it a big one by winning three out of four games from the Athletics at Detroit. And at the All-Star Game, halfway point of the season, the Tigers, 27 games over 500, were nine and a half games in front of the American League pack. But you know, uh, Mayo Smith told me right after All-Star time that he thought the most important thing that happened in that first half of the season was that three-run homer by Dick Krzyzewski that stopped the Tigers' skid in Cleveland. Another thing that uh, impressed me in the first part of the season was the fact that the experts had all said that the weakness of the Tigers would be the bullpen. And the Tigers came up with these young arms, uh, Darrell Patterson, John Warden, Pat Dobson in the bullpen, and then Johnny Wyatt came along to help out. Wyatt who came on, and uh, a question mark as far as his ability, maybe with a couple of other clubs, but he seemed to do the job for the Tigers. And Ray Oil is great feeling, especially there in the early part of the year, plus the fact that uh, we were having a hero per day for about uh, two or three weeks. Now the city was warming up to these Tigers. This team of destiny was becoming the second most important factor in the life of Detroit. The most important was the peace and harmony of the summer, and it was a Tiger summer. The Tigers went into a little slump, losing three in a row, one at Minnesota, the next two at Anaheim, but things went better at Oakland. McLean again, naturally. His 18th was an eight-hit cutout over the Athletic. Two days later, Earl Wilson back in form, made it two out of three in the series. Home to Detroit came the Tigers, the series of the Orioles. In the first game, Willie Horton made a diving attempt for a fly ball. Nearly had it. Then lost it after rolling over several times and seemed to be badly hit. Then he talked about it later. Well, first thing I thought was my knee hit me in the stomach, but uh, it just, you know, it really was a great pain and knocked the wind out of me mostly, and uh, I kind of tore my stomach muscle. Did you think you had a shot at that catch when you started? Well, I had it. I was looking at the film, and uh, I had the ball long enough for the umpire to call the man out, and uh, that's one thing I really love. You know, my center fielder, Mickey, he always look out for me. He always be the first one there with me, and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, he told me, don't move. Yeah. So far, and all the way through my career, it looks like every time something happened to me, he always be the first one to me. Been together so long, and I guess I'm more concerned to him also. You know, it's it just one of them things. He just always be the first one out there. Then it was Magic turned to star. Two out, a man on first. That's three in. Tigers are trailing by one run, four to three behind Baltimore. Here's Magic now waiting on the full count delivery by Drabowski. Swung on as they fly ball to right. It's deep. It might be. Back is Robinson, and it is a home run. A two-run homer by Magic. Here comes Freehand to score. Magic is rounding second, headed for third. All oh, the Tigers are out at home plate to meet him. Here he comes, and the Tigers win the ball game by 
Excited to know that it won the game, or did you realize that? No, uh, I knew we won the game when uh, when I knew the home run was gone, Ernie. Uh, I just got some kind of great feeling. All I could think of was that it put us really uh, two more games ahead of Baltimore. At Baltimore, a week later, it was Gerald Patterson's turn to star. They go to a full count, but two gone. Everybody will be moving. Now the windup, the three-two pitch, cold strike three. As Johnson took a fastball to the knees, Odom coming up with the right hand. And Darrell Patterson does a great job with the bases loaded, then setting down Valentine, Robinson, and Johnson on strikes. That's Patterson's best job done so far in a Tiger uniform for the Orioles from the sixth. No runs, two hits, no Detroit errors, three men left on base for the Orioles. We've played six innings. Tigers lead two to nothing. The next night, July 27th, was a milestone. Denny McLean won his 20th victory. Number 21 for Denny was his second straight shutout, a 4 nothing win over the Senators. Dick McCall had scored all four runs after getting four straight hits. Now to Minnesota for three games. The first won by the relief combination of Don McMahon, John Hiller, and Darrell Patterson. Then a loss to Dean Chance. But after that, you guessed it, Denny McLean again, his 22nd. His fifth in a row over the Twins. August 6th, Shrine Night at Tiger Stadium, and what a ball game. It lasted 17 innings before Dick Trzewski settled it for the single for a 2-1 Tiger victory over the Indians. It was too late to finish the second game of the doubleheader, but the Tigers completed the 5-2 victory when the ninth inning was played the next night. And then in the regular game, Willie Horton's 27th home run and rookie Dave Campbell's first gave Earl Wilson a 6-1 victory. And Denny McLean, who else, finished off a four-game sweep with number 23. The Red Sox came to town in third place, closing in on Baltimore just three and a half games back. And the Sox won the first game on Joe Foy's Grand Slam. But then, in a series of dramatic events, highlighted by Gates Brown's hitting, the Tigers smashed their way to victory in the next three. Campbell, Comer, and Price have batted in that ninth spot as pinch hitters so far this afternoon, Al Brown. Comer did all right. He had a home run. Now the 2-0 pitch. Long side to right field. Backing up is Harrelson. It's gone. Home run. Out on Mickey. Here it comes. He taps one over the mound. Back in the center field for a base hit. Three hand rounding third. He's coming home. McCall it goes to third. Another run into the Tigers. Five to four to score. And these Tigers just won't quit. They've got a man at first to third and one out. And that man at third is the tying run. It's five to four. The Red Sox lead in the last half of the ninth inning. On third, McAuliffe. Five to four, Boston leading in the ninth inning. Man on first is Stanley. To set the pitch. Swung on a looping pass to right. It's in. The ball game's tied. McAuliffe scores. Racing for third is Stanley. K line safe at first. It is a tie game, 5 5 in the ninth. The set. And Brown waits. The pitch. Swung on a bounding ball to first base. It's through for a base hit. The Tigers win the ball game. Brown and this crowd is going berserk as the Tigers win the doubleheader, getting the second game with a rally of four runs in the ninth inning to win it by a score of six to five. And what a mad mob this is at Tiger Stadium tonight.
Tigers went back on the road with the tough Indians and Red Sox to visit. The tribe restless in fourth place. And Denny McLean opened a three-game series at Cleveland with his 24th victory. After a loss to Sonny Siebert, the Tigers made it two out of three as Mickey Lovich relieved Joe Sparma for a three-to-nothing shutout victory. Two down, the man on second, and the Tiger outfielder Al Kaline stepping in. Game is scoreless. It's the third inning. Big series for the Tigers, perhaps even bigger for the Red Sox. Here's a set on the mound by Lonberg. He delivers. Here's a long bell to left, and it will be a home run for Kaline. And the Tigers lead 2-0. The down hits one of the three. Number seven for Kaline. He hit an inside pitch, and he pulled it with power into the screen in left field. A two-run homer by Kaline, and the Tigers jump in front, 2 to nothing in the third. Denny McLean went on to pitch his 25th victory and sixth shutout of the year. The next day's game was a thriller. Now the 1-0 pitch, long drive to left field, could be trouble for Boston. It's gone, home run. Bill Freehand, his 19th home of the year. Coming here on the top of the 11th inning, the Tigers take a 10-9 lead. This is Bill Freehand we've got to talk to. Bill, when you hit that 11th inning home run to win the ball game up in Boston, you looked a little weary coming around the base. It's been a hard day, eh? It's been a hard day, and uh, the night before was pretty long, too. The humidity was real high that day, and I don't know, in the latter part of August, I'm, my energy is a little sapped on Saturday morning, but I tell you what, when that ball jumped off my bat, I, I couldn't have been any happier, and when we finally finished that game, uh, I was really a tired man. You knew it was gone then as soon as you hit it. Well, in Boston, you can tell pretty well. If you get the ball up, uh, I knew I hit the ball well, and I thought I hit it high enough to carry the wall, and, and uh, I was lucky. You like to hit in that park, Fenway? Uh, personally, I uh, always have done pretty well there. I don't know if I'd like to call signals there all my life. It, it gets a little tough, and I think a five-run lead is never real secure in that park. A couple of days later, a new Tiger pitching hero emerged. The one pitch away from a one-hit shutout against Chicago. Hiller has his sign. He goes to work. The pitch. It's a strike. It's all over. The Tigers win it. Chucks him out to win the ball game. Nothing across for the White Sox. And the final score in game number one. Tigers seven, Chicago nothing. And the day after that, the Tigers, whose last inning heroics rivaled the perils of Pauline all year long, came up with more of the same against the White Sox. Waiting on a 1-0 delivery. Right hand hitting outfield to Mickey Stanley. Swing, there's a fly ball deep to left, going back. Barry, maybe it is out of here. A home run. Tigers two, White Sox two. Bottom of the tenth inning. The next pitch to Price is hit the deep left field. Might be, could be, it's gone! <laughs> Jim Price clears the fence downstairs in left center field. His second home run of the year. The Tigers win the ball game 3 to 2. Jim, that home run you hit off uh, Wilbur Wood, uh, what type of pitch was it? It was a knuckleball, and he, uh, that's mostly what he throws. Did it hang a little high? Was it low, or could you tell? It moved in on me, and uh, I'm mostly a pull hitter, and uh, I was fortunate enough the ball came in on me. Did you have an idea when you went up there that you were going to swing for the fence? Not really. I, I guess knuckleball pitcher, I, I usually try to go back through the middle. Uh, Wally Moses said that's the best way to hit him, and that's what I try to do. What other thoughts do you have when you come off the bench as a fence batter? Well, this year I've, I've had the good fortune to uh, come up with a couple timely base hits, and it's, it's an amazing thing. Before I go up to hit, I'm not really nervous. But after I hit, I'm shaking like a leaf. It's uh, funny. How about when you're rounding the bases and that big mob's waiting for you at the plate? I tell you, when that happened that night, I couldn't believe it. I thought I was dreaming. I woke up in the middle of the night, and uh, I, had a, I had a dream. And uh, it was just hard to comprehend. And I finally got the home plate, and uh, some of the guys were there, you know, and all the guys ran out of the field. It was, I said, you know, this is true. <laughs> you didn't get hurt in that mob, did you? I got spiked a couple times, but I'll get spiked any time for that. <laughs> 
but that didn't end the fireworks in the White Sox series. There were plenty more in the final game. One nothing, Tigers lead. They got that run in the opening inning. Man who scored is up there now, waiting on a 3-2 pitch from John. Watch out! That one uh, just about hit him. I think Max a little perturbed. He's yelling out to Tommy John. Now he goes at him, and John tackles McCullough. Here comes Pete Ward in, Mickey Stanley. Salerno's there in the middle, and both dugouts empty, and the teams are going at it. Gates Brown is out there, and now the umpires are trying to separate the combatants here, and I think the situation has been still. John, I believe, has hurt his arm. The fight with Tommy John cost Dick McCullough a $250 fine and a five-day suspension. McAuliffe's loss was the first of a series of minor disasters for the Tigers. For with McAuliffe on the bench, they went to New York and dropped four straight games, their longest losing streak of the season. Everything went wrong in the sweltering August heat of Yankee Stadium. Earl Wilson was knocked cold by a line drive as the Yankees won the first game of a twilight doubleheader 2-1. Then the Tigers were forced to a 19-inning 3-3 standoff in the second game. It had to be called because of the curfew. The Yankees were on their way with a long winning streak, the hottest team in the league. But there was even more trouble to come, plenty of it. Denny McLean, who hadn't suffered two straight defeats all year, finally lost his second in a row on Saturday. And on Sunday, the Tigers dropped both ends of a doubleheader, each one by one run. They got out of New York wishing they had never seen the place, then considered themselves lucky to split a two-game series with the White Sox. That was the last day of Dick McCullough's suspension. He returned to the lineup when the Tigers got back into the friendly environment of Tiger Stadium. Dick, it must have been very frustrating sitting out that uh, suspension. Well, it was quite frustrating, Ernie, especially when you're in a pennant race, race like we were. Uh, uh, we were about seven games, seven and a half games ahead at the time, and uh, to be set down five uh, five games, well, actually six games, and uh, and uh, see my teammates uh, trying to battle out the other, these one-run one ball ballgames, and it was quite depressing for me, and I felt uh, uh, greatly uh, part in uh, not winning a few of those games because of the fact that I was sitting on, uh, on the bench, and uh, I couldn't, I was really helpless, and uh, uh, I've had a lot of people ask me, well, what would you do if... Uh, uh, they did it again, threw at me again, and I told them, I said, well, I'd really have to try and count to, count to 100 as fast as I could and then uh, think twice. Perhaps it was the welcome home. Perhaps it was the return of McCullough. Or perhaps it was Denny McLean's determination not to extend his losing streak beyond two. Whatever the reason, the Tigers finally began winning again. Their first of two victories over the Angels was McLean's 26th which had been 12 days coming. Their second was a Mickey Lulich two-hitter settled by a Willie Horton home run. The pennant drive was really underway. Manager Mayo Smith somehow had the pitching staff at its peak, and up to the pennant clinching game, there were 11 straight games without a relief appearance by the bullpen. The Tigers won 17 out of 22 after the New York derailment, and eight in a row to clinch. And you could feel the confidence of this team, and pennant fever gripped the city. The department stores were selling everything from Tiger milk to Tiger t-shirts. The newspapers were running full-page pictures of the players every day. Every other car, it seemed, had a go get em Tigers bumper sticker. The magic number was posted all over town. People took transistor radios to the ballpark, theaters, movie houses, and restaurants. There was even a song written about... Hey, McClane, Jenny McClane, there's never been any like Jenny McClane. His pitch on the organ was perfect, and he never lost any chords. With eyes 20-20, what's near sighted Denny won all of the baseball awards. The all-time Tiger Stadium attendance record was broken as they neared the two million mark. The players were seen, heard, and featured everywhere. It was baseball, baseball, baseball. The Tigers were back in the group. Just in time, too. The second place Orioles were in town for a crucial three game series, and they were determined to take on the Tigers with a victory. This was a series that finished the Orioles as a serious threat. Oh, they were technically still in the race after that, but not really. 
for a while nearly 125,000 fans went mad in the three days between August 30th and September 1st. The Tigers took two out of three to show the baseball world they weren't about to fold in the clutch. Earl Wilson was the pitching and batting hero of the first game of Baltimore. Besides hurling a four-hitter for a 9-1 to victory, well, let the story tell itself. Swing, there's a long one, deep left, it may be, it's gone, a free run over by Wilson. Earl Wilson hits one in the left field seats, a big, long, high fly ball, and the Tigers lead 3 to nothing. And scoring in front of Earl were Bill Freehand and Tommy Magic. That was the 31st home run of Wilson's career, putting him within sight of Wes Farrell's all-time career record for pitching. The Orioles square the series in the second game, but the third was the one that set him really. The man who pitched it, McLean, of course. With Denny McLean, it almost became not whether he would win, but how he would win. He did it with his bat, three hits and Anaheim. His team would come from behind, and with his inborn sense of drama, the maestro even did it with his glove. And this even had the Baltimore announcer cheering. It may be a triple play. McLean to Magic to Cash. The first triple play in the old ballpark since 1965. And later, Denny added to his immortality by having Mickey Mantle hit his 535th home run off of him. Denny and the whole team applauded the Mick, who thus surpassed Fox for the number three all-time position. In the second game of a doubleheader at Oakland, the day after that big Baltimore series in Detroit, Freehand came up in the clutch, and... Now, oh, here's the pitch to Bill. Long fly to left field. It might be, could be. It is gone. Home run. Freehand clears that left field fence. And put the Tigers out in front by a score of 4-3. to three. The next day, it was Northrop's turn. Vogel ahead of the batter, Northrop, with a strike one count. The bases are loaded. He swings a bounding ball, right field. Suzuki scores. McCauley, rounding third. He's coming home. The throw to the plate, not in time. He scores. And on to third goes Stanley on to second goes Northrop, and the Tigers take the lead again. Four to three on a single by Jim Northrop with the bases loaded. Back to Detroit to entertain the Twins and... Man on third, man on second, and nobody out. Cott sets and pitches, and Willie swings a long fly ball to left. Maybe it's gone. A home run for Willie. The Tigers have exploded four times in the opening inning. With nobody out, they've scored four runs. And they have a four to nothing lead over the Minnesota Twins. Boswell beginning to throw in the bullpen. That's the 32nd home run for Willie Horton. It gives him 76 runs batted in. Now to Anaheim for this series of explosions. Here's the set now, the pitch. Swing, a bounding ball to left. That ought to get a run in. Here's Stanley rounding third. Heading home. Reichardt will throw to second. And the Tigers lead one to nothing on the single by K-Line. Scoring Mickey Stanley from second base. One to nothing Detroit. Here's Willie Horton stepping in. Minute delivers. Here's a fly ball to left. It's deep. Reichardt going back. Might be. It is out of here. Three nothing Tigers. The 33rd home run by Willie Horton. So the Tigers out in front early, 3-0 in the opening inning. Tigers 3, California nothing in the third. Now the windup by Bennett and the pitch is swung on. There's a draft to left deep. Rackard going back. It is out of here. Just over the fence and into the bullpen. Mickey Stanley hits home run number 11. And the Tigers now lead 4-0. Then it comes back. There's a long belt by K-Line. This one is gone. Out of here. Five to nothing Tigers. K-Line hits home run number nine. Now rounding third and headed for home. And Willie Horton is right.
right there to greet him. Now it's McLean again, with his bat helping his arm. So McLean batting against Messer Smith, that he swings and it's a fly ball to center. Johnstone is third, he's going back. It's a deep one, he's still going, and it is off the wall. Did he going for two? He's rounding second, he's heading for third, and here comes the throw. He slides, he has a three-bagger. Last game of the season in Anaheim was an easy one for the pennant-bound Tigers. He was tied with Northup. There's another drive deep to left. This might be gone. It is in the bullpen. A home run by Freehand. And the Tiger power asserting itself again here tonight. Seven to nothing. The Tigers lead him. Number 22 for Mr. Freehand. Here's Tom Satriato. Tom tonight. 0 for 2. It's a line drive to center field. Stanley coming on, tries for the shoestring catch and makes the catch. Bubba Morton, who had gone all the way to home, scampers back to third base. A great play by Stanley. Hiller kicks and deals. Fly ball, short right. Here comes Northup digging hard. He dives and he makes a great catch. Well, Stanley made one earlier, and now Northrop makes a great diving, tumbling catch in right field. And home to Detroit to entertain the athletics royally. Splendor left-handed batter, and this is a big moment in the ball game right now. The Tigers lead by one, one to nothing. Turn a throw by Wilson to second. He's picked off. Picked off at second base is Reggie Jackson. Suzuki ducks behind him. Took the throw from Wilson, and Jackson is picked off. And what a job Wilson does in the clutch. Blanking the Oakland A's in the seventh inning. No run on two hits. And there were no errors. Swing, there's a long one. It is way back and it is gone. A home run up there. Earl Wilson. Earl Wilson, belt number seven for him in home runs this year. The Tigers lead 3 0. That one disappeared in the upper deck of the left field. And now with the whole country watching, the athletics providing the opposition and a full house at Tiger Stadium to lend encouragement, Denny McLean's big bid for immortality. Everyone was there. Julie Nixon and David Eisenhower, Sandy Koufax, and the last 30-game winner, Dizzy D. The Oakland A's lead the Tigers 4-3 to three in the ninth inning. Segui walking off the mound and rubbing up that ball tossed out by umpire Halleck. And the tension is stick around here now before this big Tiger crowd. You see, set by Diego Segui. The pitch, north of swings a bounding ball. It's flown to Decatur. He throws to the plate. The throws wild. k line scores. Stanley rounding second. He throws, goes to third. Safe at first is Northrop, and the game is tied four to four. Man on first, and a man on third. One man down. Two two, the count on Willie Horton. Here's the set by Segui, the pitch. Swung on, a drive to the left. That will be the ball game. It's over the head of Gosner. McLean wins his 30th. Here comes Stanley in the score. Willie Horton, single. As the Tigers come from behind, and McLean has his 30th victory of the 1968 season. Okay, Denny, our Tiger broadcast still on the air. Congratulations. Uh, your team has come through for you all year long, and they came through for you again on the ninth inning. They've been doing it all year, Ray, and uh, you don't expect them to keep doing it like this all year. I thought I was I thought I was in a little bit of trouble, but they pulled me out again. They've been doing it all year. Denny, about your performance today, you started off very strong, and then Jackson gave you a lot of trouble. Uh, did you... Uh, Feel about the same way as you did your last couple of performances? Yes, I did. Uh, Jackson, the first home run he hit was a pretty good pitch. But uh, the second pitch it was a high change. It was a real bad pitch. Real bad. Then uh, you have a chance, of course, to talk to Dizzy Dean right after the ball game. What does have to tell you? Dizzy just congratulated me and wished me a lot of luck. All right, now you're going to 30. Uh, you want number 31 right now, of course. Uh, when do you think you'll go again? Probably Wednesday night, right? Then he has the arm feel right now. Arm feels wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much, Denny McLean. Congratulations again to you. Two days later came the climax. 
the climax it truly made, 1968, the year of the Tiger. Well, this big crowd here ready to break loose. Three men on, two men out. Game tied, one to one in the ninth inning. Nick Daniel checking his time with Jake Gibbs. The tall right-hander ready to go to work again. And the wind-up and the pitch. He swings a line shot. Base hit. Right field. The Tigers win it. Here comes k line to score. And it's all over. Don works singles. The Tigers mob Don. k line has scored. The fans are steaming on the field. And the Tigers have won their first pennant since 1945. Let's listen to the bedlam here at Tiger Stadium. The Tigers are being mobbed as they go to their dugout. They'll hardly make it. Confetti in the air. Fireworks in the air. Now, Ray Lane is in the Tiger Clubhouse, and I imagine uh, quite a few things are popping down there. Ray? Right, Johnny, we're in the Tiger Clubhouse, and as usual, uh, for the pennant winners, it's uh, the big night right now. Joe Sparma, congratulations. Thanks, Thanks Ray. Job. Thank you very much. It's great to be a part of it, I'll tell you. Joe, you had to feel a little down the last couple of months. Yeah, I did. I, I think I won this game for the people who had faith in me, and I guess my wife, who won for her, I probably wouldn't have got through the year, I'll tell you. Manager Mayo Smith over here right now. The man that's been dunked by about five bottles of champagne. He is sopping wet. It ended up the way we uh, we wanted it to. We won it, even though we knew that that uh, Baltimore had lost. So uh, this is a very happy day. And of course, these guys uh, they played great all year. I'm happy first for them. Of course, uh, John Fester, the Tiger organization. Last but not least, the fans. They've waited a long time for this. And see if we can't get over here to reach the Tiger president, Mr. John Fetzer. Right now, we get up here. And one Alice with a bottle of champagne. Mr. Fetzer, congratulations to Alice. <laughs> well, I'm uh, not very good at giving play-by-play -play descriptions, Ray, but that was the finest toss of water I have ever seen tossed on Jim Campbell's ball head. <laughs> and this is the greatest testimony I know to the greatest ball club in the world today. Mr. Fetzer, I want to say one thing. You have tried for the past few years to build yourself a pennant contender. You got it tonight. This is the climax of a long, long, cold winter night. But I tell you right now, it's warm and deep. Can you get Mr. Campbell for us over there? Mickey Lola's trying to get Jim. Who is, uh, Jim, congratulations. Hi, Ray. Oh, yeah. Well, hell, we're real, real happy. I'll tell you, real happy is you know, not the word for it, is it? Yeah, uh, you think uh, we've been so close for a few days, but when it comes, that uh, you think, well, you won't get excited. But by golly, it's, it's just wonderful. Jim, you've had a hero in about every ball game. Oh, heck, there's really no one hero in this club. They're a great bunch of kids, and and I, I think they're uh, they're just great. This has to certainly pay off for all the hours and days and months of hard work trying to build yeah, up. Yeah, and years, years. And years. <laughs> okay, you uh, look great with that so far, yeah, Jim. Yeah, great. Jim Campbell, general manager and vice president of the Detroit Tigers. Hey, Mickey. Mickey Lowley, say we can't get the old left-hander over here, Mickey. Hey, buddy, it must be a uh, pretty good feeling. <laughs> oh, I tell you, Ray, it's great. I, I don't know what to say. I mean... We had a feeling, you know, we we're going to win it since spring training, and here we are, and we're the happiest people in the world right now. You know, you're talking about that feeling. I think it was very prevalent in spring training. It was sort of a silent thought that all you guys had, it seemed like, dedication. You knew you could do it. Well, everybody said in spring training, I mean, how do we feel after last year when we come so close and miss? And we said, well, we knew what it was like there. We were all more experienced, and I think with today we have proved that we did gain more experience last year. And I think there's a great future for the Detroit Tigers in the next few years in Detroit. Mickey, you've had that in and out season, at least the first the three months of the season. You seem to be on the right track again. Well, you know Mickey Lolich. He always seems to come along when he has to, so I'm real glad I could do it. Mickey, you've done a wonderful job, and good luck the remaining uh, of the season, uh, season, and good luck in the series. Thank you very much, Ray. Thank you. And out on the streets of Detroit was the spirit of 1968, the year of the Tigers, the spirit of joy, and peace and harmony, brought about by a baseball team that won the city's first pennant in 23 years.